Dear students, in this module, we're going to look at the protein fragmentation techniques. Why would one want to fragment the proteins in the first place or the peptides that are there in the sample? As you know, MS1 helps you to measure the molecular weight of the intact peptide or the intact protein. So once you have measured the intact mass of the sample protein or peptide, then you can compare it with the theoretical mass of the protein or peptide in the database. However, what if there are multiple protein matches from the database? So if you have a protein from the sample coming and giving you the data MS1, then you have multiple proteins that are matching with that MS1 data. What to do in such a situation? Of course, one step will be to score and rank the proteins in proportion to the difference between the intact mass from MS1 and the intact mass from the database. But still, in some cases, this is not the final solution. In order to further uh, rank the proteins in a more appropriate way, we need to fragment the proteins and obtain the peptides from those proteins. Or in case if you have the precursor molecule, which is a peptide itself, then you need to fragment it to obtain peptides from the intact peptide. So, as I just mentioned, your priority is to find out which protein is there in the sample and towards finding the, the answer to this question you cannot simply rely on MS1 data and in order to further to improve your questions answer you have to fragment the proteins and obtain the mass spectrum of the peptides of that intact protein as well. Okay, so for fragmenting a protein, one wonders if the protein or the peptide is already within the mass spectrometer's chamber, how can you access it and how can you fragment it? So because you inserted your protein into the mass spectrometer and it, it was already ionized and it got uh, measured for its mass over charge ratio, but how to access that protein to fragment it further? It's a very interesting question. For that, what people have done is they have created mass spectrometers with an add-on uh, utility. So what that instrument does is that it detects the mass over charge ratio of a specific molecule and then allows for its fragmentation as well. So this can be extremely handy if you want to do further analysis. Let me explain this to you by looking at this schematic. So this time we're going to modify this schema to include the fragmentation chamber as well. So you know your sample actually traveled, got deflected, got measured, and here you have three different molecules that were there in the sample originally. Now, if you have a chamber here, an instrument that actually gets hold of one of the mass over charge ratio, that is one specific molecule, and then somehow fragment it, then you can insert it back into the mass spectrometer and this entire cycle can be repeated. So let me review this again. So you had your sample, it got injected into the mass spectrometer, it got deflected, its mass over charge ratio was measured, and we found out that there were three different molecules. So if you select a specific mass over charge ratio, then this can be forwarded into a new chamber or the fragmentation chamber and you can fragment it and give it back through
through an injection into the mass spectrometer for further analysis. So this fragmentation is very important in this and there are several strategies that are used in the fragmentation chamber. I will just introduce them to you briefly. So one of them is the electron capture dissociation, another one is the collision induced dissociation and then there is this electron transfer dissociation as well and there are several other methods to it. So within your fragmentation chamber you can apply any one of these methods and arrive at the fragments. Just to give you an overview, each fragmentation strategy fragments the protein or peptide in question in a very specific way. So once the proteins are fragmented, for instance, the ECD will give you two different ions from the entire protein. It will cleave the protein from a specific position and you will have two different fragments. The fragments are given here in your textbook. You can take a look at them in detail, but briefly the CID or the collision induced dissociation can actually fragment the protein into two fragments and you can have the molecular weight of this ion and this ion reported as different peaks. So you can use these fragmentation strategies to arrive at the fragments of the precursor molecule and you can repeat the mass spectrometry procedure to measure the molecular weight of these peptides as well. And similarly, as you did with MS1, you can have a scoring scheme for these fragments matches from the database as well.